Hello all and welcome to TVM Academy. This is RC number 40 of our free practice series VARC 100, a free practice course for CAT verbal section. You may get the PDF of this RC on our Telegram group. You may also sign up on our portal for free to write this test, uh, to write this RC as a test. Let's begin. So in the first paragraph, author tells you that according to scientists, the accumulation of ice over multiple seasons was due to astronomical factors, but there was no record of the glacial cycles to test the hypothesis. Okay. So basically the scientists uh, uh, have believed for some years that uh, the glaciation on earth was caused by some astronomical factors, but they did not have uh, the data for glacial cycles to match with their astronomical data. Okay. In the second paragraph, author tells us that in 1950s, Mr. E produced the first complete record of glacial cycles using the ratio of O18 to O16 molecules in the shells of sea animals F. So what is the nature of a relationship? In the third paragraph, he says, the higher the ratio of O18 molecules in seawater, the more ice sheets there are during that age. Okay. So there is some chemistry involved here. He explains the chemistry and basically tells us, essentially tells us that the higher the ratio of O18 uh, molecule in seawater, the more ice caps there are during that age. Okay. In the last paragraph, finally, he says, therefore, the seafloor sediments indicate that the ratio of O18 rose and fell in accordance with the astronomical cycles of Earth, thereby suggesting a link between Earth's orbital cycles and uh, the glaciation cycles. So essentially, earlier we did not have the glacial, the evidence of glacial cycles to prove that uh, they are affected by astronomical cycles of earth. But now we do have some record. That is what the passage tells you. Okay. Question number one, according to the passage, the large ice sheets typical of glacial cycles are most directly caused by what most directly. So what is the immediate cause? What is the immediate cause of glaciation or the large ice sheets that get formed? Okay. Option A, changes in the average temperatures in the tropics and over the oceans. Alien idea, nowhere mentioned in the passage. Prolonged increases in the rate at which water evaporates from the oceans. Increased rate of evaporation from oceans. Increased rate of evaporation. Passage does mention evaporation in, uh, uh, in the course of explaining the mechanism, the physical phenomena. But the passage never mentions an increase in the rate of evaporation as a reason behind ice cap formation. So there's no increase. All right. So this is also factually incorrect. Option C, steadily increasing precipitation rates in the northern latitudes and in the mountainous regions. Again, increased precipitation rates are also not mentioned as a direct cause of ice cap that the precipitation rates increase and therefore ice gets formed. Nothing like that is mentioned. The continual failure of snow to melt completely during the summer months. First paragraph explicitly mentions this. Eight times within the past million years, some something in the earth's climatic equation has changed, allowing snow in the mountains and the northern latitudes to accumulate over from one season to the next instead of melting away. So basically the most direct cause is that the snow uh, did not melt away. Therefore, ice sheets, large ice sheets got formed. They, they got accumulated. The most direct cause is this option D should be the obvious choice. Can be inferred from the passage that which of the following is true of the water lock in glaciers and ice sheets today. Okay. We have already understood the mechanism here. The mechanism is that uh, as the water evaporates 
from the sea flow from the sea ocean uh, from the sea surface or the ocean surface o18 molecules come back in the form of precipitation but o16 molecules they condense late and by the time they condense they have already moved away from the ocean and then they precipitate as ice or snow uh, in the mountainous regions or the northern lat latitudes that's what happens that's the case okay so what can we say about the ice caps today option a it is richer in oxygen 18 quite the opposite it's deficient in oxygen 18 oxygen 18 comes back o18 comes back to the ocean in the form of precipitation sooner as mentioned in paragraph 3 so it returns more quickly to the oceans here so o18 ice caps are not rich they are not richer in o18 they are poorer opposite option b it is primarily located in the northern latitudes of the earth how do we know that it is primarily located that to today it is possible that it is located in the mountainous regions which which do not lie in the northern latitudes necessarily we don't know whether primary location is northern latitudes data insufficiency i would say it is this modifier is wrong option c it is steadily decreasing the ice caps are steadily decreasing in amount due to increased melting or thawing during summer months how do we know that it is happening today it is steadily decreasing data insufficiency it is possible that we are already in a glacial glacial cycle it is possible that the ice is accumulating how do we know we might be in a glacial cycle already so uh, we don't know about this the passage does not give us information or data to uh, which suggests that it is steadily decreasing option d in comparison with sea water it is relatively poor in o18 that is 100% true as explained in the third paragraph the mechanism O18 comes back to sea water quicker, and the 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 uh, condensed form of water that reaches the ice caps is deficient in O18 and uh, rich in O16. Therefore, ratio wise, therefore, of course, it is poorer in O18 than the sea water in comparison with the sea water. Option D is definitely correct, and therefore the correct answer. Question three. the discussion of the oxygen isotope ratios in paragraph 3 of the passage suggests that which of the following must be assumed if the conclusion is to be validly drawn basically it's a critical reasoning question cr question and assumption based question what is the author's assumption in drawing the conclusion now please understand i explain this critical reasoning in my critical reasoning classes uh, of uh, the course that we run vrc comprehensive course uh but in short i'll tell you what an assumption is basically an assumption in the course of a conclusion in drawing a conclusion is something which is essential for the conclusion to be valid it is essential therefore if that is not true if assumption is not true the conclusion will also not be true okay so we will go by this understanding and see which of the following given options is essential for the conclusion to be true okay option a the earth's overall annual precipitation rates do not dramatically increase or decrease over time now please understand even if the earth's overall annual precipitation rates increase or decrease over time even if they increase over time the ratio of o18 should not change the amount the absolute amount of o18 will change but the ratio of o18 to o16 should not uh, should not change so let's say in some uh, ages on earth there was more precipitation the annual precipitation was more in some ages it would mean that there was more o18 coming back to uh, the sea and there was relatively more or more O sixteen also coming back to us. The ratio should not get disturbed, however. But the finding suggests that O eighteen ratio is higher for some sediments. For some ages, the O eighteen ratio was higher as per our sediment studies. Okay. Therefore, uh, we are not talking about the absolute amount of rainfall. We are talking about the relative ratios of O eighteen and O sixteen. They should not change even if the precipitation was more. So this is not an assumption. 
essential to the conclusion. This is not an assumption essential to the conclusion. The conclusion is still valid, even if the annual precipitation was more during some years, during some ages. Okay. Option B: The various chemicals dissolved in sea water have had the same concentrations. We are not concerned with various chemicals. We are only concerned with one chemical, oxygen, and its two isotopes, O18 and O16. So this is irrelevant. This is not an assumption anywhere in the in drawing the conclusion. Option C: Natural processes unrelated to ice formation do not result in the formation of large quantities of oxygen 18. Ah, now please understand: Is the author assuming that there is no alternative process? Uh, of formation of O18 molecules, there is no alternative natural process that results in O18 molecules. Yes, he is assuming because if there are alternative processes that can also result in the formation of O18 molecules, if there are alternative processes that can result in the formation of O18 molecules, it means that the higher ratio of O18 in some ages was not because of the ice caps. It was because of these other processes. Therefore, yes, option C is an assumption, which is essential for the conclusion to be valid. Option C is the answer. I hope you got, uh, you understood how an assumption question is to be dealt with. Option D: Water molecules failing, uh, falling as precipitation usually fall on the open ocean. Rather than on continents or polar ice caps, again irrelevant. Is the author assuming that O18 molecules fall on ocean rather than on the continents or polar ice caps? No, because the finding suggests that O18 ratio is higher for some ages for, for some sediments, which means that even if they were not falling on ocean, they were also falling on continents. The ratio is still higher, which goes. Uh, which further proves their point, which further, you know, uh, 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 leads us to the conclusion or reinforcement of the conclusion that yes, ice caps were responsible. Something changed during these ages. So option D is irrelevant or contradictory to what we need. Okay. Question four: The passage suggests that the scientists who first first thing to note. It's not about a particular scientist, Mr. E. It's about scientists in general. So singularity, plurality of the word, question demand should be understood carefully. The passage suggests that the scientists who first constructed a coherent, continuous picture of the past variations in marine sediment isotope ratios did which of the following? So we are talking about the scientists mentioned in last paragraph. What did they do? The first scientist was Emiliani. History. He found that there was a connection between rise and fall of O18 ratio and Earth's orbital cycle, astronomical cycle. There was a connection link between. And since that pioneering observation, O18 measurements have been made on hundreds of cores. So scientists have used more sediment studies. They have they have used more sediments for their studies. They have obtained more data. A chronology for the combined record enables scientists to show that the record contains the very same periodicities as the orbital processes do. Okay, so there's a link. It it has gotten confirmed already. So they have used more data. They have drilled more. They have used hundreds of cores after Mr. E. Okay. So what have they done? Option A: They have relied primarily on the data obtained by Mr. E. Wrong. Opposite. They have used their own data. They have obtained their own data, as we saw. Hundreds of cores have been studied. Okay, so they have obtained their own data. They have not relied on Mr. E's data. Option B: They have combined data derived from the analysis of many different core samples. Exactly what we read. Option B should be the answer. They have matched the data. Obtained by geologists with that provided by astronomers, alien idea. There's no uh, such idea mentioned. Compared, they have compared data obtained from core samples in many different marine environments with the data samples derived from polar ice caps. Again, alien idea. Nothing of this nature is mentioned. Easy question. Question number four. 
लास्ट क्वेश्चन फाइव द पैसे सजेस्ट दैट साइंटिस्ट मैं इन लाइन एट बेसिकली इट्स द फर्स्ट पैराग्राफ डिपेंडिंग अपॉन your screen size uh depending upon your uh, monitor's size this line number could vary a little maybe for some of you it was line number 6 for some of you it was line number 7 for some of you it was line number 8 but uh, it was understandable that uh, the question talks of scientists mentioned in first paragraph the passage suggests that the scientists mentioned in uh, line 8 considered their reconstruction of past astronomical cycles to be what okay they considered their work and their hypothesis their reconstruction of astronomical cycles to be what there was a line written here scientists speculated that the glacial cycles were ultimately driven by astronomical factors uh, blah 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 okay but but the lack of independent record of glacial cycles ice age made the hypothesis untenable so basically the problem was there was no data there was no independent record of the glacial cycles uh, when did the earth experience uh, ice age when did the earth experience what were the cycles right there was no independent data therefore they could not confirm the connection between glaciation and astronomical cycles okay that is what they thought option a they thought that their 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 hypothesis was unreliable wait it goes out here they never thought it was unreliable it was difficult to confirm it it was difficult to test it it was untestable not unreliable it was difficult to test the hypothesis okay so factually incorrect goes out they thought that their study was adequate enough to allow that reconstructions use in explaining the glacial cycles if if a record of the latter could be found ah so if we could find a record of the glacial cycles ice age timings then their study that then their hypothesis was adequate to reconstruct uh, the connection between astronomical cycles and glacial cycles exactly what they thought so what they lacked in was a record of ice ice age timings or the glacial cycles okay option c was tempting they thought that their hypothesis was in need of confirmation correct through comparison with an independent source of information correct about astronomical phenomena wait not they did not need an independent record of astronomical phenomena they had record of astronomical phenomena what they needed was a record of ice age timing glacial cycles not the astronomical cycles they needed therefore this is a very tempting choice however factually incorrect you must have made this careless mistake some of you at least option d they thought their that their data was their hypothesis was incomplete and therefore unusable opposite to what they thought it was not unusable for them it just uh, also needed some complementary studies from uh, of of glacial cycles a complementary record of glacial cycles that's all a nice passage guys i hope you enjoyed this passage uh, question level was moderate the overall level of the passage was also moderate hope you got all of them right i hope that you are improving with these uh, free rcs do not forget to like the video and share word about tvm with your friends an important update we are launching a fresh batch of online live classes complete verbal course vrc comprehensive 4.0 on uh, from the 11th of june that is day after saturday sunday it's a weekend batch the timings are 7 to 9 pm it includes everything concepts lectures mock tests etc so if you are interested you may uh, talk to us you may send a message on telegram group keep practicing keep learning keep improving cheers to learn